Fate plays with us like buckets at the well, where one is filled and one an empty shell. Hello and welcome back to Little Talk. We are doing this thorough textual reading and analysis of King Shudraka's Michakatika and we have finally reached the last part where we will be looking at the 10th act which is called the end. So obviously this is going to be the last video of this series. Uh, you can also call it the last episode uh, looking at how this turned out to be kind of like a series on the web. And thank you all for being with me through this very long journey and I hope I have helped you and I have made you look uh, into the beauty of this text and appreciate the various shades of characters that Shudraka has ended up creating in this beautiful play. This act, the 10th act is a long one again, just like the ninth act, uh, but there is a lot of repetition. Uh, with uh, speeches, there is repetition. Uh, with action, there is repetition. So I will try to kind of skip over those repetitions, uh, will not try to bore you. Uh, there is something else I wanted to share with you. So far as the authorship of this play is concerned, uh, it is often contended that the first few acts of this play was actually written by the celebrated playwright Vasa. The rest of the play was completed by the person who was the disciple of Vasa and who uh, calls himself Shudraka. Now because in those days uh, these publication details regarding the authorship, these things were not very clear. Uh, so, we do not have any definite answer uh, to the question who wrote Mrichakatika, but clearly the uh, stylistic difference between the first part of the play and the second part of the play is uh, there. You can identify certain differences in the way uh, the characters are developed, in the way the speeches are delivered. However, I still believe that uh, if the disciple or the follower of Vasa, he completed uh, the work which Vasa started, he did a commendable job because uh, there are no stylistic lapses, it doesn't go down, okay? it doesn't deteriorate or something, it uh, rather flourishes uh, with a lot of dimensions added to it. With that said and done, let us just move on to the text, the 10th act where we will find two headsmen people who are appointed to execute Charudatta, dragging Charudatta through the streets of Ujjaini. And what are they saying? Let's find out. Then think no longer of the pain. In just a second, you will be slain. Quite comforting. We understand the fashions new to fetter you and kill you too. In chopping heads, we never fail, nor when the victim we impale. So the headsmen, they try to convince Charudatta that the whole process will be uh, quite quick and very less painful than he thinks it to be. And they move the people out of the way who are probably crowding in front of them. Out of the way, gentlemen, out of the way, this is the noble Charudatta. Now, when they are referring to Charudatta, they are using the expression noble Charudatta. They know that Charudatta is a convicted person and they are supposed to kill him because he has committed a murder. But somehow, they always refer to him uh, with a lot of respect, which is understandable from this word noble Charudatta. The oleander on his brow, oleander is a red colored flower, uh, which you usually make a sacrificial animal wear when they are offered to the gods and here the prisoner he is wearing it because he is going to be executed. In headsman's hands you see him now like a lamp whose oil runs nearly dry his light fades gently or it die. So just like a lamp uh, when its oil is dried up it stops burning similarly when a man's days are counted when his days are over the lamp of his life is extinguished and Charudatta is going to meet his end very soon. Charudatta is of course very gloomy at this moment. My body wet by teardrops falling, falling. My limbs polluted by the clinging mud. 
flowers from the graveyard torn, my wreath appalling, for ghastly sacrifice holds ravens calling, and for the fragrant incense of my blood. He can anticipate the horror of his death and the sadness of his death, and these images are very gripping. The headsmen, they speak to him, come Charudatta, come, and then Charudatta is again in that philosophical mood, incalculable are the ways of human destiny. I cannot calculate, we cannot understand what fate has to offer us, that I am come to such a plight, plight is trouble, danger, red marks of hands in sandal paste over all my body have been placed. So he has been marked as a criminal. The people have uh, soaked their hands in red sandal paste and stamped him kind of with these handprints. The man with meal and powder strewn is now to beast of offering grown. So he compares himself to a sacrificial lamb or a sacrificial goat who is offered to the gods uh, because he is uh, feeling that his human side is no more existing. He has become like a beast of offering to the gods. Now these two headsmen, they are also given names. Their names are Goha and Ahinta. So Goha and Ahinta, they speak to each other. Look Ahinta, look man, while he of citizens the best goes to his death at fate's behest. So somehow Goha, he also wants to feel that Charudatta is probably not a criminal, maybe it's a turn of events that has led to their circumstances, fate. So he still considers Charudatta as a very noble person. Does heaven thus weep that he must die? Does lightning paint the cloudless sky? So there is probably a little bit of a shower, a little bit of lightning somewhere and he feels that the heaven is also participating in the mourning process. Uh, it's weeping for Charudatta. Ahinta replies, Goha, man, the heaven weeps not that he must die, nor lightning paints the cloudless sky. No, it's not the rain uh, which uh, we are looking at. Yet streams are falling constantly from many a woman's clouded eye. So it's as if so many women are crying right now because of Charudatta, because he is so much loved by every woman in the city, that it feels like it's raining, it's lightning. And again, while this poor victim to his death is led, note the word victim here. Okay, Charudatta is referred to as a victim. No man nor woman here but sorely weep. So everybody is weeping right now. And so the dust by countless teardrops fed thus peacefully upon the highway sleeps. So the dust has settled down because it has become wet with human tears which are falling because of Charudatta's plight. Anyway, they call Charudatta once again and they make a proclamation, a declaration of his guilt. Uh, it's like a loud announcement where they tell everybody that Charudatta is guilty of this and this and therefore he is going to be killed, executed and anybody who will commit this kind of crime will also face the same kind of end. So this is how it's done and usually they make these proclamations throughout the streets uh, before the final execution is carried out. So this is the way in which uh, they make the whole town aware of uh, this punishment that is going to be meted out. So this is the first uh, proclamation we hear. After that proclamation, Charudatta is speaking in an aside, in a very despondent way, in a very uh, grim way and in a lot of despair. By hundred sacrifices purified, my radiant name was once proclaimed by countless altars side. So he was a religious man and a very honest person. So his name was brilliantly referred to as the epitome of virtue. He says that my name is a was a bright one. Okay, till now. And knew no blame. Now comes my hour of death. And evil men of baser fame who belong to low fame 
okay, who do not have my reputation, those men, evil men, in public spots, proclaim it once again, but linked with shame. Now my name bears with it the burden of sin, the burden of crime. He looks up and he stops his ears. He cannot listen to all that. Vasanta Sena, oh my beloved, from thy dear lips that vied with corals red, betraying teeth more bright than moonbeams fair, my soul with heaven's nectar once was fed. How can I, helpless, taste that poison dread to drink shame's poisoned cup? How can I bear? So the memory of Vasantasena is very vivid in his mind right now. And he feels that he has drunk from her lips. How can he drink from the poison cup of life? So yes, nobody is offering him poison. It's like he looks at death, this kind of death as a poison he has to consume. And he's not ready for that at all. Uh, the headsmen take him further and he again says, he looks at the people who are about him. They are all weeping. They are all sad because of Charudatta. And Charudatta looks at these people who have come to witness the execution and says, their faces with their garments hem now hiding. Hem is the outer lining of the garment. And if somebody wants to hide their face, if they are weeping or if they are sad or if they feel any shame, they usually hide their faces. Uh, with the hem of their garment. So here he can see people, they're hiding their faces either from shame or from sadness. They don't want people to see their tears. They stand afar, whom once I counted friends. Even foes have smiles for men with fortune biding. So when somebody is fortunate, uh, somebody has a lot of wealth, has a lot of luck, then even enemies are happy to be with him, even enemies smile at him. But friends prove faithless when good fortune ends. These people are my friends. I used to call them friends, but they are of no use to me now. Now, outside the stage, we hear voices, voices of Charudatta's son and Moitru. Oh, my father, oh, my friend. And Charudatta, he listens and he makes a request to the headsman that, please, I want to meet my son for the last time and they of course comply. The child comes in. Charudatta is very mournful and he uh, speaks out. Alas, my son, alas, Muitreo, ah, woe is me. Long, too long shall I thirst in vain through all my sojourn dead. This vessel, small, will not contain the water for the dead. So, so when a person is dead, then it is uh, often believed that the son or his successors, they offer him drink, okay, water uh, in a vessel to satisfy his soul. But Rohusena is so young, so the vessel he is going to offer is going to be so small. In a way, Rohusena becomes the vessel uh, who is going to offer that spiritual salvation or spiritual satisfaction after Charudatta is dead, but Charudatta feels that my child is so small, he is not ready to offer that final uh, water to me after I am dead. And then he thinks that he should give something to his son, the ever generous, ever giving soul of Charudatta yearns to give something, even when he has nothing left, not even perhaps a few breath to take anymore. He looks at himself and perceives the sacrificial cord, that is the upavit, the thread which he wears, and he gives that to his son. Ah, this at least is mine. The precious cord that Brahmans hold is unadorned with pearls and gold, yet girt therewith they sacrifice to gods above and fathers old. So he offers his thread to Rohusena. And then the child, he addresses the headsman. Oh, headsman, where are you leading my father? Charudatta comforts his son. My darling, about my neck I needs must wear the oleander wreath. The oleander being a red colored flower uh, somehow symbolizes process of 
institutionalized killing you know when you kill uh, an animal uh, in the name of god you put a red garland all around its neck it makes things look very ritualistic probably and the same kind of rituals are being performed with uh, people uh, who are beheaded here it seems upon my shoulder i must bear the stake and in my heart the care of near approaching death so he wants to inform his son that he is going to die very soon the headsman goha he says my boy not we the headsmen are though born of headsman race thy father's life who mar these these are headsmen base so we are not killing your father we are not his headsmen we are simply following orders then why do you murder my father it is the king's orders must bear the blame not we kill me and let father go free bless you may you live long for saying that so it's of course something emotional that we see on stage and charudatta feels that this son this relationship which he has is the best thing on earth and he really feels very sad that he has to leave all now this treasure love this taste of heaven to rich and poor alike is given than sandal better or than balm to soothe the heart and give it calm so this bond between a father and son is something which is enjoyed by both rich and poor and it is beyond uh, wealth it is beyond the realm of properties because it is something very divine and he appreciates that anyway on the other side we have a change of scene here again uh, that same technique where uh, this whole act is divided into scenes so in this small episode we find stavaraka uh, the driver who brought the bullock cart to sansthanak he was imprisoned by sansthanak in a prison cell and he knew the whole thing he witnessed the whole thing like right? he he was aware of the fact that charudatta was uh, convicted in a wrong way and he wanted to do something about it but he was imprisoned and in this part he somehow manages to escape from the prison and he decides to run towards the place where charudatta is going to be executed so that he can go and tell everybody that sansthanak is the murderer charudatta is not at all guilty so this is the part where uh, stavaraka escapes he reaches the place where the headsmen they were uh, with charudatta they tell them everything and then the headsmen they ask him are you telling the truth and he says yes um and uh, sansthanak wanted to stop me from telling the truth that's why he bound me up now on the other side again what's happening we see sansthanak so again a change of scene here we see sansthanak he is enjoying the moment from his uh, tower he can hear the headsmen uh, announcements and everything and he gives us some idea into uh, what is happening uh, in his mind the headsmen's voices they sound like a broken brass cymbal i hear the music of the fatal drum and the kettle drums and show i suppose that that poor man charudatta is being led to the place of execution he is now talking about the time when he can hear the announcement okay i must go and she it it is a great delight to see my enemy die besides i have heard that a man who sees his enemy being killed is sure not to have sure eyes in his next birth so if i can see my enemy being killed next birth i will be born with great eyes i acted like a worm that had crept into the knot of a lotus root he knows that it was not an honorable act the act of murdering wasn't as in i acted like a worm i looked for a hole to crawl out at and brought about the death of this poor man charudatta now i'll climb up the tower of my own palace and have a look at my own heroic deeds he does so and looks about so we can see him you know going up maybe he is pretending to climb some stairs and he goes up 
and from the top of his house like so he is standing on the tower okay of his house wonderful what a crowd there is to she that poor man led to his death now he looks at the crowd pretty decent crowd there because so many people are affected by charudatta's plight what would it be when an aristocrat a big man like me was being led to his death he feels that this crowd has gathered for the poor man so maybe if a rich man dies more people will come so he has this uh, completely uh, twisted idea about the world where goodness uh, then moral values these don't count so he doesn't realize that these people have gathered there because they love charudatta they have gathered there uh, because they think that he is probably not the criminal and they are feeling sorry for him sansthanak feels that the number of people gathering at your death is proportionate to the kind of wealth you have and he is mistaken and then he realizes that this announcement has stopped but why was this proclamation made near my palace tower and why was it stopped why my slave savaraka is gone too so he realizes that savaraka has escaped i hope he hasn't run away and betrayed the secret i must go and look for him so he comes down approaches the crowd so now everybody is there on the scene so this whole idea of bringing everyone uh, together all the important characters uh, on stage in the final act this is a very uh, conventional Uh, approach which we find in most of the playwrights even shakespeare that when the final act comes then almost all the characters are there on stage okay now when stavaraka sees that sansthanak is approaching them then he is quite alarmed and even the headsmen they think that okay a mad bull is coming and they actually say that give way make room and shut the door be silent and say nothing more here comes a mad bull through the press whose horns are sharp with wickedness everybody hates sansthana but they are so powerless too sansthana comes and first he tries to take stavaraka away come come make way stavaraka my little shan my slave come let's go home you scoundrel are you not content with the murder of vasanta sena must you try now to murder the noble charudatta that tree of life to all who loved him savaraka is clearly quite pissed off here i am beautiful as a pot of jewels i kill no woman oh ho you murdered her not the noble charudatta now these are coming from the bystanders the people who have you know, gathered about sansthanak is not comfortable with the fact that people are getting suspicious of him and so he first tries to bribe savaraka he gives him a bangle savaraka says see he is bribing me he is giving me a bangle and then sansthanak says that i am not giving him any bangle it is this bangle that he stole from me and uh, now i have taken it back so he kinds of confuses people and finally we see that uh, no matter how much savaraka appeals his words do not have any kind of effect the headsmen they want to believe him but the headsmen's hands are tied and stavaraka realizes that because he is a slave his words will not be counted this we have seen like even in case of vasanta sena's mother she was not a slave but she was a prostitute and therefore her words did not count as well so this was the kind of society uh, that we see here and why then it, even now this is so very true uh, even now when a rich influential person he goes to the court often often uh, he somehow manages to bend justice or so called justice according to his whims so that is the tragedy in this world savaraka he falls to the feet of charudatta that see this is all i could do for you and charudatta understands that he comforts him by saying that okay you have done what you had to do but it's my fate what can i do about it sansthanak gets impatient he wants them to kill charudatta immediately and he says out of the way you so he drives savaraka away come headsmen what are you waiting for kill him kill him yourself if you are in a hurry 
headsmen are not very happy right now. The child who is still there, he says, Oh, headsmen, kill me and let father go free. Look at Sansthanak's reply. Yes, Shan and father, kill them both. He is ruthless, merciless, inhuman. You cannot actually ask anybody to kill a child. And that is what he is doing here. Sharudatta knows that a foolish man can do anything. Okay, and he really feels quite unsafe about his son right now. This fool might do anything. Go, my son, to your mother. And what should I do then? Go with thy mother to a hermitage. No moment, dear delay, lest of thy father's fault thou reap the wage and tread the self-same way. So before they catch you and make you pay for what I have done or what they think I have done, leave this place. And he asks Moitreo to leave too. Moitreo actually wants to give up everything. He wants to even die uh, if his friend is going to die. But he knows that he has to keep Rohasena safe too. Sanstanak is... Very impatient. Look here, didn't I tell you to kill Charudatta and his son too? We haven't any orders from the king to kill Charudatta and his son too. Run away, boy, run away. So they drive Rohasena away, ask him to run away. Here is the third place of proclamation. So as I said that they have certain number of proclamations to make, announcements to make before they execute. It's not like you take a criminal and simply chop off his head. You tell people why you are going to kill him and then uh, move on to a different place. Tell people there so that everybody knows why this criminal is going to be executed. And this is another place of proclamation. They make the same proclamation here. And while they are proclaiming, Sansthanak feels that they are saying that Charudatta has killed Vasantasena. But people don't believe them. So he has to make people believe also. But the citizens don't believe it. Charudatta, you jackknape, the citizens don't believe it. Share it with your own tongue. I murdered Vasantasena. Now we know that in the trial scene also, he wanted Charudatta to admit that I killed Vasantasena. But Charudatta never, even there, said these words that I killed Vasantasena. He said that I am taking the blame and then he said he will tell the rest. Here also the same thing happens. He does not tell that he has murdered Vasantasena. And he says here the same things. A scoundrel I who bear the blame nor seek in heaven to be blessed a maid or goddess. It is the same. But he will say the rest. Killed her. So be it. It's your turn to kill him man. Now Goha and Ahinta, the two headsmen, they uh, know that they have to execute Charudatta right now. But who will strike the blow? There are two headsmen. One of them will execute. Who will execute? Now, when there are two headsmen, usually uh, headsman number one wants headsman number two to strike the blow because, you know, at the end of the day, you don't want to kill people, I believe. Because if you are not like a serial killer or something, you want to avoid a situation where you are going to kill somebody, even if it is by the king's order. So, Goha wants Ahinta to be the person killing Charudatta. Ahinta wants Goha to do it. So, they are arguing, it's your turn to kill him, man. No, yours. Well, let's reckon it out. So, Goha feels that, okay, it's my turn today. Maybe the last time it was Ahinta who killed. So, this time it's going to be me. Fine, I'll just wait a little bit. Well, if it is my turn to kill him, we will just let it wait a minute. Why? Well, when my father was going to heaven, he said to me, Son Goha, if it's your turn to kill him, don't kill the sinner too quick. But why? Perhaps some good man might give the money to set him free. Perhaps a son might be born to the king and to celebrate the event, all the prisoners might be set free. Perhaps an elephant might break loose and the prisoner might escape with the excitement. Perhaps there might be a change of kings and all the prisoners might be set free. He's talking about the possibilities under which Charudatta might be spared or might escape. So he wants to give Charudatta every bit of luck he can offer him, every bit of chance he is in a position to offer him. Sansana hears the last phrase probably. What? What? A change of kings? And this is prophetic because yes, 
it might turn out to be true. Well, let's reckon it out whose turn it is. Oh, come, kill Charudatta at once. Noble Charudatta, it is the king's commandment that bears the blame, not we headsmen. Think then of what you needs must think. So they kind of are very apologetic and they seek his forgiveness in a way. Charudatta knows this, that these headsmen, uh, they are not responsible. So he asks them, where do you want me to go? So they take him to the place and Goha asks him, are you frightened, Charudatta? Charudatta is not frightened because he is going to die. He is frightened because his name is tarnished, his name is spoilt. Fool, death have I never feared, but blackened fame. My death were welcome, coming free from shame. In the first act itself, remember he said Moitru that it is better to die than to live in this isolation where no friends are there and you are living like the poor man. So we know that he has never been frightened of death. But this kind of death, where it brings a lot of shame to your name, to your family, this death is something that has frightened him. My death were welcome, coming free from shame as were a son newborn to bear my name. Otherwise, death is like your gift which you get from life if this is a, a kind of an honorable death. Noble Charudatta, the moon and the sun dwell in the vault of heaven, yet even they are overtaken by disaster. What Goha tries to talk about is the situation where the moon and the sun, they are eclipsed. And ancient Indians, they believe that uh, Rahu uh, was responsible for swallowing up the sun and the moon. Uh, from time to time. So he is referring to those kinds of disaster. How much more death fearing creatures and men in this world, one rises only to fall, another falls only to rise again. But from him who has risen and falls, his body drops like a garment. So he, he, he gives his own version of a little Bhagavad Gita here. Um, Goha is actually trying to pass the time. He is trying to do everything that is in his power to delay the execution, it seems. And uh, he offers some consolation, some philosophy, uh, something uh, that would comfort the dying person at his hand. He calls the human body a garment, something which we find in Bhagavad Gita, that your body is a garment, and when you die, you simply change your garment, you, your soul gets a new one. So it's like you're always given a new chance. Hinduism is all about giving second chances and third chances and fourth chances. We don't have eternal damnation for anyone. It's always a way in which you uh, pay your karma back. So uh, yes, uh, all your good deeds will be rewarded not in some heaven, but in the next birth which you will take. So that's kind of comforting. If you are dying and you love this world, you will always want to come back to it. Lay these thoughts to heart and be strong. And then he makes the fourth proclamation and he proclaims the sentence again. As I was saying, there's a lot of repetition. So we see Charudatta repeating the same thing, talking about Vasanta Sena, they making the same proclamation again. Now, Vasanta Sena comes in. Okay, and this is a very exciting part because the audience, they know that Vasanta Sena is not dead. They have seen her being rescued by the shampooer turned monk. But uh, nobody uh, in the play other than the monk, they know about Vasanta Sena, right? They all thought that she's dead. She comes and her appearance takes away automatically every blame from Charudatta and uh, let's see the reaction here. They arrive right at the point where Charudatta is about to be executed and she says, I am the wretch for whose sake he is put to death. Goha looks at her. Who is the woman with the streaming hair that smites her shoulder loosened from its bands? She loudly calls upon us to forbear and hastens hither with uplifted hands. So they can see Vasanta Sena you know, running towards them with uplifted hands. Stop, stop, don't kill the man. She comes 
and uh, okay she hugs charudatta tightly oh charudatta what does it mean monk he falls at his feet oh charudatta what does it mean so somebody is uh, at his breast somebody is at his feet charudatta is all filled with emotion right now goha the headsman he is withdrawing vasanta sena at least we did not kill an innocent man thank heaven charudatta lives so monk is happy and shall live a hundred years and i too am brought back to life again so it's like at this moment is vasanta sena brought to life back again you know not that moment when the monk revived her so this is like a new reunion for her a rebirth for her they are all very happy goha wants to go back and report the whole thing to the king but they have decided that we will not kill charudatta because vasanta sena is living sansthanak is very very surprised and at the same time in terror goodness who brought this slave back to life this is the end of me good i'll run away so he runs away and then goha comes back and says didn't we have orders from the king to put the man to death who murdered vasanta sena let us hunt for the king's brother in law now they have known the truth and in the orders it was written that the person who has killed vasanta sena will be executed so now then let's bring the brother in law back now that the headsmen have gone sansthanak is gone charudatta is with vasanta sena and he gazes at her is this vasanta sena's counterfeit counterfeit means you know duplicate is it real vasanta sena or somebody else looks like her or she herself from heaven above descended or do i but in madness see my sweet or has her precious life not yet been ended so what are the odds is she really alive am i seeing a ghost has she come back from the dead am i imagining things so what is real he is confused did she return from heaven that i might rescued be was her form to another given is this that other she so is it not really her is it somebody else who in you know, a kind of looks like her her form was given to that person O oh, noble Charudatta, I am indeed the wretch for whose sake you are fallen upon this unworthy plight. So she says that no, I am Vasanta Sena, and everybody is happy. A miracle, a miracle! Vasanta Sena lives, and everything. They are very happy together. And then Charudatta asks her about this monk who has helped her. But who is this? When that unworthy wretch had killed me. this worthy man brought me back to life who are you unselfish friend you do not remember me sir now that ex shampooer present monk he is talking i am that shampooer who once was happy to rub your feet when i fell into the hands of certain gamblers this sister in buddha upon hearing that i had been your servant brought my freedom with her jewels thereupon i grew tired of the gambler's life and became a buddhist monk now this lady made a mistake in her bullock cart and so came to the old garden pushpakaranda but when that unworthy wretch learned that she would not love him he murdered her so he is you know, talking about this whole incident he murdered her by strangling and i found her there now while he is talking something else is happening you know people outside the stage and we can hear some noises and the gist of the matter is victory to aryaka the king so there is a victory where aryaka has won and he has become the king that's a game changer here then we see sharvilaka entering again a change of scene yes palaka the royal wretch i slew anointing aryaka good king and true so we get the information that Sharvilaka was a part of the team which has managed to kill King Palaka, and now Aryaka is the king of the place. And now, like sacrificial flowers, I wed the king's commandment to my bended head to give Sat Charudatta life anew. So he has come from the court, like from the king's court, present king's court. Aryaka has ordered him go and free Charudatta. They don't know that. in the meantime vasanta sena uh, has already arrived and freed him so he has passed his order sharvilaka has a problem sharvilaka is the thief who stole 
at Charudatta's place long back and he's feeling kind of guilty to face him right now. Yet how shall I approach him who have so grievously sinned against him? But no, honesty is always honorable. He goes, folds his hand. Oh, noble Charudatta, who are you, sir? I forced your house in manner base. So I was a thief at your place and stole the gems there left behind. But though this sin oppress my mind, I throw myself upon your grace. Not so, my friend, thereby you showed your faith in me. So Charudatta is all forgiving, we know. Sharvilaka gives him all the information here that Aryaka, uh, he has become the king and he wants to help you back. He wants to pay you back rather because you helped him escape uh, in your cart. Charudatta also comes to know that Sharvilaka helped Aryaka escape the prison in the first place and like everybody is very happy about the fact that Aryaka has won the whole thing. Sharvilaka gives another very important information here. Scarcely was your friend Aryaka established in Ujjaini. Established means uh, he was made a king. So after Aryaka became the king, what did Aryaka do? When he bestowed upon you the throne of Kushavati. So Aryaka handed over this whole town of Kushavati to Charudatta. So Charudatta becomes a very powerful man now. He had nothing and now he has a lot of wealth. On the bank of the Vina, may you graciously receive this first token of his love. He turns around. Come, lead hither that rascal, that villain, the brother-in-law of the king. So now he wants to uh, finish all his business with Sansthanak after giving that huge uh, information to Charudatta. Charudatta is clearly surprised that why am I rewarded with so much? Charvilaka says, Sir, King Aryaka declares that he won this kingdom through your virtues and that you are therefore to have some benefit from it. The kingdom won through my virtues. <laughs> so Charudatta is always a humble man. He knows that he helped Aryaka escape and he knows that because Aryaka escaped, therefore Aryaka has become the king. But he somehow feels that he is not responsible for Aryaka's power, of course. But we see that the, uh, the kind of friendship, the kind of right choices uh, that he has made, this paid off at the end. Sansthanak is brought in and strangely he knows that the only person who can help him right now is Charudatta because Charudatta is generous to the point of stupidity. He is so generous that you cannot even call him foolish. Anyway, he falls at his feet. Charudatta decides to forgive him. That is really very noble of him. Uh, maybe he thinks that what will he do anymore? Like how can he harm me anymore? What's the point of killing him? And Charudatta knows that this man is terribly lost in his own stupidness. So his life is his punishment. So what's the point of making it easier for him? So he decides to get him free. He tells everyone that he seeks my protection so I cannot let you kill him. Sharvilaka says, fine, if you think so, uh, it shall be done. And Sansthanak is happy. Hooray, I breathe again. He exits with the guards. Maybe he is still captured and put to prison but not killed. Sharvilaka now turns to Vasantasena and gives her her good news. Mistress Vasantasena, the king is pleased to bestow upon you the title Wedded Wife. Wedded Wife is a title of honor. You don't remain a prostitute. You don't remain the other woman. You become the wedded wife of somebody. So that is the best outcome possible for Vasantasena. Her whole life had been living, uh, you know, in the outskirts of people's homes. Uh, we have seen her yearning to get entry into the inner court. And this title, wedded wife, will allow her that entry. She doesn't become a free woman. So that is uh, strange because earlier she was free. Yes, she was uh, harassed by rogues like Sansthanak and there was no protection for her. Now she will have the protection of her husband. In this case, Charudatta, of course. And it's uh, a little bit disturbing uh, for us, you know, postmodern women uh, to conceive this whole idea as 
liberating that you are turned into a wedded wife from a free woman uh, i would rather consider it to be a fall in some way but then from a sociological point of view it's a rise in power uh, if you remember the time when uh, she said to madanika that madanika after she has become the wedded wife uh, she will you know become eligible for a superior position so madanika was on a higher plane than vasantasena because madanika was a wife and this same superior position although a nameless position is offered to her by the king and not just the name but uh, along with it the veil something which hides the face okay sharvilaka places the veil upon vasantasena which becomes a symbol that she needs to be protected by her husband and nobody will look at her uh, with wrong intent or with lustfulness and then he asks charudatta what we will do with this monk what shall be done for this monk how will he be rewarded monk what do you most desire when i see this example of the uncertainty of all things i am twice content to be a monk i don't want to be anything i have seen that in this world everything changes i'll rather be a monk his purpose is not to be changed my friend let him be appointed spiritual father over all the monasteries in the land so he still gives him some power although spiritually uh, but yes some real power that he will be the you know guardian of all the monasteries and then charudatta wants to now when charudatta doesn't have anything he gives people a lot of things imagine what he is going to give when he has a whole kingdom to himself okay this whole town for himself let the good fellow be given his freedom he is talking about stavaraka the slave of sansthana let those headsmen be appointed chiefs of all the headsmen he is happy with his own headsmen too the three they were also very good let them be heads of headsmen let chandanaka be appointed chief of all the police in the land let the brother in law of the king continue to act exactly as he acted in the past that is stupidly so he wants everybody to be happy and contented it shall be done only that man leave him to me and i will kill him charvilaka says i will do what you say but i will not let sansthanak live he who seeks protection shall be safe the humbled foe that is the enemy who seeks forgiveness who seeks thine aid thou mayest not smite with steely blade be cruelty with kindness paid then tell me what i may yet do for you so what else i can do for you charudatta says what else do i need i have everything can there be more than this i kept unstained my virtues even worth my name is re established as an honorable name granted my enemy his abject suit friend aryaka destroyed his foeman's root my friend aryaka has become the king and rules a king over all the steadfast earth for them ujjaini means the earth probably it was a small world then not a globalized one this dear loved maiden is at last mine own again that feeling of possessing vasantasena is really a lot for him and you united with me as a friend and shall i ask for further mercies shown to me who cannot sound these mercies end fate plays with us like buckets at the well where one is filled and one an empty shell where one is rising while another falls so that's the whole idea of the pulley with which you pull the water you know you drag one rope down and the other rope is brought up so one empty bucket goes in and one filled bucket comes up so he is now the filled bucket uh, earlier he was the empty bucket so fate gives you this this cycle of changes okay and shows how life is changed now heaven now hell yet may the wishes of our epilogue be fulfilled and then he makes us look at the epilogue epilogue is the end part of the play just like the benediction it is also an uh, not very integral part of the play but it's like you know finishing touch and it's a very short one so let's just read it up quickly may kind yield streaming milk 
the earth her grain so it ends with a lot of good wishes for everybody and may the heaven give never failing rain the winds waft happiness to all that breathes and all that lives live free from every pain in paths of righteousness may brahmans tread and high esteem their high deserving wed may kings in justice's ways be ever led and earth submissive bend her grateful head so let everybody be happy let the kings be uh, you know just let the earth submit to the kings and a lot of good wish for everyone after which everybody leaves the stage so that brings us to the end of this act and the end of this play we are left with a lot of questions of course questions uh, as to what happens to the relationship between charudatta's wife and charudatta now that he has two wives what kind of household would that turn into uh, what would happen to sansthanak what other mischiefs uh, would he plan we are left with uh, some loose ends i believe uh, but that is acceptable uh, looking at the huge number of characters that are presented to us it is natural that we will have some characters hanging there uh, unresolved too we don't get to see the reaction of charudatta's wife after charudatta is uh, you know freed or after she gets to know that now she has to live with vasanta sena all the time we also don't get the reaction of vasanta sena's mother now that she has lost her property to another man but we realize that this was after all the story of charudatta and vasanta sena which to some extent uh, reaches a happy point a satisfying point a point of union and joy and of course vasanta sena's improvement in social stature uh, is also uh, very important from a sociological point of view there are other questions very much relevant to this whole play in general questions uh, which we have discussed extensively in different kinds of articles i have given the links Uh, in the description box of each video you have all the answers that i have written down uh, answers on the justification of title on the characters of charudatta vasanta sena the kind of society uh, that we get to see in this play and i have discussed uh, different aspects uh, of the prakarana as reflected in the play as brought out in the play and other questions too so if you have watched these videos and if you have gone through those articles i'm quite certain that you are more than prepared for your exams and if you don't think about exams too you have definitely um, enjoyed this play because this play is so good i always believe that reading a text thoroughly is very important you see when you memorize answers maybe very good answers you will get great marks in exams fine but you know one year two year down the line you will forget everything you are bound to forget everything but if you have read a text it remains with you like a movie you have seen it remains with you you know for a long long time and next time you read something else all the texts that you have read so far they will help as reference even if they are not connected you can relate to one another and literature is about this you know relating one text to the other the more you are capable of relating across countries across generations across ages the richer your ideas will become the richer your answers will become and if you aspire to be a teacher you will be able to communicate that enthusiasm of textual reading with your future students so thank you for sticking around it was great having you on this wonderful long journey of king shudrakas michchakatika i hope to catch you all very soon with some other series right here on nibble pop stay subscribed stay happy bye bye